Winsor Newton asked me to do some promotional drawings for a market competition that they were running. And the basic idea was to take their Griffin logo and then remove most of it until you were left with just a few sort of abstract bits of the line work and then create a picture using this as your starting point. So I came up with about uh, three or four rough drawings and the one you're going to see me do here is the actual first drawing that I came up with. Uh, the first sketch, the first few ideas when I was looking at that line work led to this drawing here. I think the first idea that I had was to do with the small lines up here towards the top right and those became the lips of what was going to be this character and then the longer more flowing lines I decided would be really good as the sort of edges or outlines of some armor so he instantly became this kind of knight kind of figure uh, and then I just looked into ways to kind of play with that and change it around and flip it a little bit and so giving him the snake's tongue that you can see, the forked snake's tongue, was one way that I wanted to um, change it. And also throw in a few other little things as well, such as the, the raven bird at the bottom, which, which takes the sort of big, long, sort of swooping wave-like lines, and that becomes the, the wings, the outstretched wings of the raven. So it's, it's a sort of a slightly abstracted idea. Um, and there you can see me filling in the green because I figured, well, if he's got a snake's tongue, you know, he's going to maybe have snake skin as well. So the green that I put on there, the meadow green, was like the base for that. And uh, the armor that you can see me doing here, I just decided I would lay down uh, a cool aqua base, uh, leave the white shiny highlights, uh, and then just put successive layers on top of that of um, ice gray and also uh, cool gray 4 and 5 in order to try and get those sort of dark reflective kind of shiny metal streaks. Looking at the tongue, I wanted to make that really a sort of real feature. So I decided that I would really hit that with some lime green and some really, really bright greens and put some little dots on it as well to be the surface of the tongue. So it would really stand out a lot. There you can see me putting in some of those reflective streaks that I talked about. And I'm using the chisel nib here and it's really, really quick. It's really fast. But also if you tilt at an angle, you can get some very, very thick lines to very, very, you know, sort of wafer thin kind of lines as well. And you can see me building it up now. So I've gone in with ice gray three as a base. And then you can see me using, um, I think that's cool gray number four to get some of those darker shapes and darker kind of reflective areas in. As I'm filling in the, the lips there, you've probably noticed that in terms of proportion, the head is way too big for the body. Uh, and I did notice this at the, the drawing out stage, but I thought, well, you know, it's got a kind of twisted perspective, strange proportions anyway. So I didn't see any need to, to change that, to rectify that, to, to correct that. I thought, yeah, fine, you know, the head can be a bit out of proportion with the body because, you know, you, you've got his body not finishing anyway because the swoop of the raven cuts across the lower third of the entire picture. So, you know, I didn't fuss too much about, you know, correcting the proportion. I thought I'd just leave it kind of as it was and it would maybe add to the kind of weirdness and strangeness uh, of the picture. That little griffin emblem, the little griffin logo there that is on his um, armor, uh, that came out of uh, when I was a kid, there was a bank in, in the UK, and it had a griffin logo, a very, very simplified griffin logo um, throughout the 80s, uh, and I think it just stuck in my head. And when, obviously, the the uh, the logo competition is based on the, the, the Windsor and Newton griffin logo, I thought, okay, they've taken most of that away, but I thought it would be a nice touch for me to still be able to include a griffin logo, albeit a different one, on the guy's armor. So the picture has a knight in it, so you're kind of thinking wartime, conflict, medieval times. So I decided that what I would do is do the sky um, just using four colors here. I think it's red, lipstick red, uh, and then amber, orange, and saffron. Uh, trying to blend them in a little bit, but also letting it kind of be a little rough at the edges so that it's like the kind of smoke and haze of battle. And that's what you can see me doing here, filling in a whole crowd of, um, you know, armies in the background, holding up their spears and their halberds and whatever it is they've got. So I'm placing the knight in a context, you know, that he is in battle and that there is conflict going on. And perhaps he's the leader of these men. He's their commander. I don't know. I'm always watching other people's videos and trying to pick up little hints and tips and here you see me use the um, the gold brush marker to add reflected light. So you know the, the colors of the sky are kind of like these orangey yellow so I use that orangey yellow marker to add reflected light to the um, armor in the hope of you know convincing you a bit more that you know the light from around him is bouncing off this reflective surface. It's not something that I'm usually good at and usually remember to do so it's something that you know I'm trying to get into the habit of doing so I notice in a lot of the pictures that I look at reflective light 
really adds something and enriches the color and the idea of the scene. Here you can see me adding some extra dark bits to um, his face and the scales on his face when I decided to give him that snake tongue. I then decided to give him scaly skin as well. So I think what I'm doing here is using forest green and apple and just blending those two together in each of the scales uh, in the hope that I'm getting a bit of depth there and the idea that the, the light source is coming from the right hand side. Uh, and striking his face, so just giving you a few of the contours down the nose, uh, around the, the sort of cheeks, uh, and around the mouth. I did look at some reference pictures of scales, but perhaps not the way they curve around something, so I, I winged it a little bit doing those ones on the nose. I'm kind of happy with how it turned out, but I really should have researched it better. Then looking at the crowds in the background, I wanted to give that um, a, a sort of sense of depth. So I hope you can see that I filled in a slightly darker color to be the foreground and then didn't fill in all of the kind of faces and heads and, and shapes in the background to give it kind of like a little bit of sort of foreground and medium ground there. Here you can see me doing the raven uh, and I just chose, you know, a series of blues to do the raven and, uh, you know, made sure I had those little reflective white bits left on his wings. I probably should have made those a little bit longer and wider so that it, it sort of drew your attention and made you focus on the wings a little bit more. I think the reflective light areas have done, they're perhaps a little bit too small. Here I have to totally admit that with the gaps underneath the raven's wings, those white areas left in the picture, I kind of got writer's block, artist block, whatever you want to call it. Didn't know what to fill in there, so I decided I would just make a sort of kind of a cut across the bottom third of the picture and underneath the raven's wings, I would fill in more sky using exactly the same color scheme that I'd used in the top section. So at least it would link to it that way. Um, and then what I would do is fill the sky with some sort of silhouettes of birds. So the raven was part of a flock that was flying towards, you know, the kind of carrion birds that you get that um, circle around battlefields and, and, you know, feed on obviously what's left. Uh, once that was all done, I uh, just put in your sort of undulating black outline, a rough black outline using the uh, Pentel brush pen, and then the picture was finished. And that's what a scan looks like, so the colors are much brighter. Uh, and I'm kind of pleased with it. I would possibly try and tweak some of the proportions if I had to do it again and come up with a better idea for behind the raven. There is just a rough sketch showing you how I sort of figured out the sky. I did some of the sky red at the top and then some of it red at the bottom to see if that would work out differently. Thanks for watching and don't forget to comment, subscribe, like or share.